please welcome Jan Kleinert, Developer Advocate at Red Hat. All right, thank you. I'm excited to be here, too. Um, my talk is going to be a little bit different than the ones um, before me. Um, and part of the reason for that is that I'm actually a relatively new Redis user. So um, as Dave mentioned, I'm a developer advocate at Red Hat. I focus on OpenShift and helping make sure that developers have the information and tools and whatever they need to be successful getting their applications deployed and running on OpenShift. And OpenShift is a distribution of Kubernetes. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the path I took to actually getting to use Redis and, and be up here talking to you today about user sessions um, and how you can use Redis as a session store. Um, OK. So essentially, one of the things that I've been working on recently, um, a few months back, was creating a short workshop tutorial to help explain to developers how they can deploy the Redis Enterprise operator. Um, the operator basically is a way to deploy a Redis Enterprise cluster on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, but without having to have somebody on your team who has all the operational knowledge of how to install, upgrade, manage you know, Redis Enterprise, all of that is packaged into this operator, um, which is basically going to do all of that for you. Um, and then so showing developers how to deploy that and then how to actually use it once it's up and running. Um, so the course of doing that, you know, I had to get much more familiar with Redis, build an application that connects to it once it's up and running on this cluster, um, and it kind of piqued my interest. And then in talking with Dave and some other folks, um, I learned a little bit more about the use case of Redis for um, a session store, which Jude just touched on also. Um, I am curious how many of you are using Redis as like a, a session store for session management? OK, not everybody, so that's good. I'm glad it's not everybody. So hopefully this will be um, interesting and useful to all of you, um, particularly if you're not using it. Um, want to talk about what are sessions, because it's such an overloaded term, um, especially in technology. It means a different thing to different people. So I want to tell you what we're talking about with sessions. Um, we'll look at the process of adding basic session management to a Node.js web app. So you can kind of see by example um, what that looks like, how it works, what actually is happening with a session. And then we'll talk a little bit about what comes next. So once you have session management in place, and once you also have say, authentication or some other more complex features in place, what do you do when the session is over? You could just get rid of all the data. You could save some of it. So what are the options there? And what are some of the use cases um, when a session ends? All right. So as I mentioned, session is a really overloaded term. Um, when I'm talking about a session, what I mean is in the context of a web application. So it's, it's kind of all of the requests and responses that happen initiated by a single user in one, um, in one period of time. So I go to a website, I navigate some pages, I click on some things, whatever, and then I leave. I close my browser and I go off somewhere. Um, that session is typically going to be over at that point. Um, why do we even need this construct of a session in the first place? Um, basically, it's to store state in our web application. So HTTP, of course, by you know, nature is not stateful. It's stateless. You know, every request and response pair um, is independent of the others, and the server doesn't know who you are when you come back with a second request, unless you have something like um, a session storing that state. So. Um, Essentially, what a session, session management is usually done by having an ID for your session that is stored most of the time. There's multiple ways to do this, but most of the time on your client side, you've got a cookie that's storing the session ID, and then you've got something else, somewhere else that's not on the client side, where you're storing both that session ID and your session data. We're going to talk about the use case where it's a session store, which is represented by this blob here. Um, and in our case, the session store is going to be using Redis. Um, and that will hold the session ID, but also the data associated with the session. So in the use case we're looking at, we're not storing that session data, whatever we're, data we care about from the session on the client side or in the cookie. We just store the session ID in the cookie, and that way we can map it to the, uh, the data in the session store. So that's a little context about what I'm going to be showing you. And now, if I can switch over to the laptop so we want to give her a chance to show her demo. We're about 10, 15 minutes early for lunch. Who 
two votes that we go to lunch and come back and see her demo. Yeah. All right, there we go. Who doesn't want lunch, right? <laughs> All right, so we're going to come back at the same time that it says on the schedule. We do have a little bit of buffer for uh, cases like this. So we're just going to stick with the regular schedule. So we'll see you back here in an hour and 10, 15 minutes. OK, folks, welcome back from lunch. We're going to go ahead and get right away into the previous talk that got interrupted. Turns out we had some sort of disconnection in the network cable somewhere, so, or the, the cable somewhere. So we got that fixed. So hopefully everything will be smooth sailing from now on. Um, now about the time. So we are going to be about 15 minutes late after this talk, but I think we'll make up a little bit of time as we go. Um, and if not, maybe we'll have to go a few minutes into happy hour, but uh, we'll try to avoid that. <laughs> OK. So uh, let's go ahead and get going. Jan, All right. take it away. Great. And I might be able to shave off a few minutes here. We'll see. So I'm just going to jump right back into it. I was telling you we wanted to look at an example. This is a very simple web app. It's just pulling names of machine learning generated craft beer names. I'm going to click this button. You'll see a name appear, but then what we're really going to look at is this session info panel. So let's, let me load it fresh because it's sitting here from before. OK. So I'm going to click this. We have a name came up. And then what I really want us to look at is this information here. So I am pulling this information. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> You guys, I'm just a mess today. OK, so I'm pulling this from um, the request. So we're using Express Session and then Connect Redis modules, uh, NPM modules, to, um, to do this integration. So I'm pulling my session ID. Um, we've got the session expiration. And then the piece of data that we're storing about our session is the number of beer names we've viewed, so one in this case. And just to let you see, so if I click this again, now it should be two. And these names are nonsensical most of the time. Um, and this session ID stayed the same. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I have the session expiration time set to 60 seconds. So if I sit here and do nothing for 60 seconds, my session will expire, and a new one will be created when I come back. Um, but if I keep interacting with the server, um, it's going to reinstate that, basically like set it back to 60 seconds. So, um, What I want to show you here is we talked about how the session ID is stored in the cookie you know, on, on, in my browser here locally, we can see that. So this is this Redis demo uh, cookie here. And if you look at this part of it, you can see that that AE92, the session ID, is stored as part of that cookie's value. But this three beers viewed in the session, that is not stored in the cookie. That's actually in our, our Redis session store, which if we... I've waited too long, I think, to be able to grab this session ID. So I'm going to refresh it, copy it, and show you that. Oh, it's still alive. Great. Awesome. If I give it this session ID, we should get our session information back. And so in addition to things about like the expiration and all of that, we also have views for. So that's the piece of data. Obviously, it's a simplistic example. But we're storing the number of views of beers for that session. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do this. But if I were to close out my browser uh, and come back before that 60 seconds expired, all of this would still be there. The session would still be active. It would still say four beers. And um, the all of that would still be in play. If I either sit here and wait for more than 60 seconds, or if I close the browser and go away for more than 60 seconds, again, that will expire. So that's just basic, basic, basic of how you know, the session works, what's stored on you know, the client side, what's stored in the session store. Uh, but what I want to look at next, and I'm debating whether we switch back to the slides or just stay here. I'm going to stay here. So what I want to look at next is what if we add authentication to this? Because a lot of times when, um, when I mention session management to somebody, they're like, oh, like logins? And like, yes, yeah, sometimes. Like in this case, we can have session management without having a login. This is kind of an anonymous user. But if we add login, logout, authentication to the puzzle, how does that change things? So I'm going to switch branches here. And hopefully, what should happen is when I reload this, it's going to do the post again, but that's fine. OK, so now, yes, so now we're using this other version that actually has authentication. And you can see here at the bottom, we're 
we're noting whether or not there's a logged in user. Um, there is not. Uh, but everything else about this application is the same. What we've added now is we have added um, Passport.js to do authentication. We're just doing basic. I've got a MySQL database where I've got users um, saved. And we will go and log in here with our test user. Now, if I can show you quickly here. Now that I've logged in, you can see I am logged in. I've got my same session as before. If we go home, I'm still logged in. I've got the same session ID. It's incrementing the number of beers viewed. And then if I go to log out, what will happen now, and this is happening because I've told the application to you, what would happen by default if I log out is it's just going to remove that user information from the session. Um, but I've also told it to uh, basically destroy the session. So it's going to end the session. Log, log out the user, um, and then when I come back, it will have started a new session. But before I do that, I want to show you what's different in our session store now, if I was not too slow. Let's see. OK, good. I'm not too slow. So now, in addition to having the views that we had before, we also have this passport data that has our user. And this is the user ID from our database. Um, Oh, that looks awfully line wrappy. But you can see, so here's our test at test.com user, and this is their user ID. So that's what it's basically um, showing us there. It's pulled that from the database where we actually store our users and passwords and all of that. OK, so now I will do a logout. Notice here, this starts with B72. I'll go to logout. And as we expected, I'm no longer logged in, and I've got a new session. So that is basically kind of the easiest possible flow of how you can handle session, of how session management basically can work, how it can work if you add authentication on top. It doesn't, oh, it, they're not one-to-one -one in every single case. Sometimes there's additional work you're going to need to do to like end a session when you do a logout. And it all depends on, you know, like what framework you're using, what libraries you're using, some platforms, some frameworks. You don't even have to worry about session stuff because it's just, handled for you by default. But this is an example um, using Node.js, because that's what I use most of the time. Um, if we can switch back to the slides now, I think I'm done with the demo part. Awesome. OK, and I'm going to breeze through this, because I talked about it a little bit. But basically, we're using Express Session and Connect Redis to do the basic session management. And we use Connect Redis. That's there's a whole bunch of options you can use with Express Session um, for your session store. Um, Redis is the one that I chose here, and it's actually a really good choice to use. Um, it has a lot of benefits. And then we looked at the authentication piece, and what we, all we really added to the app to get that authentication working was Passport and um, MySQL database for the, the user database that we were querying. So what happens next? What do you do after a session ends? Um, there are a lot of things you could do. You could just do nothing and let that data just you know, evaporate. Maybe you don't care about storing that number of, of beers viewed, for example. Or maybe you don't really um, have any information that needs to be persisted. But in some cases, you will. Um, maybe, for example, uh, you have your, it's an e-commerce site, and you're storing the items that are in the cart in that session. And maybe you want to save some kind of cart identifier um, and a mapping of those items so that the person could email themselves a link and view it later on another device. Some, I made that up. That may or may not make sense in this case. But something like that where you need to save some kind of information long term, that could be done at the end of a session. You could do that when somebody logs out. You could do that. Um, right before you know a session's going to expire, if that makes sense logically with your flow, or at any other logical point in the process where you're like, OK, I need to take a snapshot of what's happening here and save some of that session information to longer term storage. You can do that um, to take advantage of, of what you need to keep and then just ignore the rest. OK. So a final note, um, this is kind of tangential to what we were talking about. You know, we've been talking about how session store is one use case of Redis, of Redis um, but it doesn't preclude you from also using Redis for other use cases at the same time. Um, so it is completely possible to use Redis as a cache and a data store 
I'm sorry, cash in a session store at the same time. I stole this from a blog post on the Redis blog that is a great blog post that talks about the kind of subtle differences between cash and session store. Um, and so the URL is there, and it's also at the end of the, the presentation. I would recommend if you want to learn a little bit more about these topics, that's a great blog to check out. I didn't write it. I just think it's good. Um, and so in summary, I wanted to leave you with some of these resources, and I will share these slides later. Um, the example app, both uh, branches of it that we looked at here, um, is there in my GitHub. There's some links to some of the modules that are used in the example if you're curious about them or if it's relevant to the work you do. That blog is there. Um, I also included links to the Redis Enterprise Operator. Um, if you're using Kubernetes or if you're using OpenShift, and that would be something that might be interesting to you, these are the, document, the documentation for it. Um, I found them really helpful when I was uh, using it. And then the workshop that I showed a screenshot of at the very beginning, um, which was how I got uh, involved with, with Redis-related stuff in the first place, I've spun up a not real big OpenShift cluster um, and deployed it there. So if you want to just try it out, if you're curious, it's there. You don't need to log in or anything. I do only think I support eight concurrent sessions. So if like all of you went at once, a bunch of you are not going to be able to get in right now. But that'll be up for a few days if you want to try it out. And um, if you have any other questions, if you want to follow up on anything on both Twitter and GitHub, um, my user ID is Jan Kleinert. Or you can find me around during breaks this afternoon. All right, so I hope that was helpful and gave you a little more information, kind of understanding of how sessions and session management work and how Redis can help you. Thank you.